today, early Sunday morning, 6.30am, it's not even light yet, uh, up to brew uh, a mild ale today, first mild, so uh, it's going to be a slightly red ale, red mild ale I'm going to call it, and here's tip number one for the day. My HRT is ready to go as soon as I got out of bed, and I didn't leave it on all night, I didn't leave it on all night, but what I did do is I had one of my old fish tank 24 hour timers, I put it on, it turned on at about 4 o'clock this morning, by the time I got up at 6 o'clock, it's there, ready to go, no wasted time, I can mash in, get it over and done with, get it finish an early brew day. So that's it there, just a 24 hour timer, you can find them anywhere, supermarkets, pretty cheap these days. While my mash tun's preheating at the moment, uh, I've got my grain ready to go in. I'll leave the recipe in the link down below. Red Mild Ale or something will be called. I haven't given it another name yet because the first time I brewed it, made up the recipe yesterday. Oh, the day before yesterday. Uh, but because it's such uh, a small beer, it's only going to fill half my mash tun. There's about 11 to 12 litres of water going to go on with that and about 4 kilo of grain, so that'll only about half fill my uh, 32 litre mash tun. Now I'm a bit scared about losing heat. Um, I want to keep it at a, a high temperature mash to give it a bit of body. Even though it's a light beer, I don't want it dry and I don't want it thin bodied. So what I'm going to do, I've got a bit of this uh, exercise type mat. But, so this one happens to be silver foil lined on one side, just like the exercise mat on the other. And I'm just going to cut that to the same size as my mash tun. And I'm going to lay that on top of the mash. Um, it's only new and I haven't washed it. So I might uh, put a bit of uh, aluminium foil under it or wrap it in, wrap it in some glad wrap. Just so it doesn't give any um, plasticky, rubbery flavours into the beer. And it's the first time I've used it. So uh, we'll see how it goes, eh? I'll show you what I do. Mash time. Just going to quickly measure it. So it's about nine and a half inches. But just under 16. Uh, we're covered in cling wrap or cling film. I folded it up. I'm going to put the silver side down. That should do the job. Mash tun's preheated. There's the salts I'm using. It's different for everywhere. I've got a bit of uh, calcium sulfite and calcium chloride. Probably should have some Epsom salts, but I haven't got any today. And 12 litres strike water. Around 74 and a half degrees. About 12 litres. Get this grain in. See that roasted barley in there? Maybe you can see it. Little bits of roasted barley. Should give it a nice colour. Alright, that's mixed up. Get out on your foil. Like that. I'm going to stick that on top as well. 
there we go should make a difference and we're up where I wanted to be about 67 I've only just put that in, it'll probably go up a little bit more once it settles. I want it about 67 to 68 degrees for an hour, and that should do it. Alright, here we go at the end of the hour. <clears throat> it hasn't been done too bad, it's about 66 at the moment, so that's really good. That's really good. Okay, let's have a look at how it. Uh, well, and that's still sitting on top. That's a good thing. Coil out. There we go. Oh, that smells good. Now mash out six liters of water at about 97 degrees. We're at that now, so I can just add the six liters. Mash out, give it a stir. Lovely looking colour already. Whack the lid back on for 10 minutes. Been mashing out for 10 minutes. Time to start some recirculation just to get the runnings nice and clear. Usual three jugs is enough, it's running nice and clear now. I don't know if you can see it on the camera very well, but it is. Here we go, first runnings. Time for the batch barge and which is 19 litres, around 76 degrees. Ten fifteen minutes, second runnings, last runnings. Measuring stick should have about thirty two liters. It should be about there, thirty two liters. Give it a stir before I take the refractor meter, meter reading. Okay, that noise you can probably hear is the elements bringing up the water to the boil. Um, so, as you saw, I got 1032. And that's my perfect pre-boil gravity. That's exactly what uh, Beersmith told me I'd get. Um, if you wanted to make this a traditional mile, uh, you could do what I'm going to do and use 25 grams of uh, East Cape Goldings for an hour boil. You could probably up it to about 30. Um, but I don't like doing things traditional. <laughs> uh, and and that would be, you know, you'd leave it at that. You wouldn't put in any late edition hops. And it's, it'll be a great beer. But I'm a bit of a hop head. And I don't like a bit of hop flavour in all my beers, but 99% of my beers. So at the end in the Whirlpool, I'm going to add 20 grams of Chinook. And I'll probably dry hop with a little bit of Chinook as well. Um, people, some people might think that's strange, but uh, I really like a hop flavour in my beers. And um, 
I'm mucking around with this. I want it to be a mild, which it is. It'll probably come up around 3.8%, something like that. But I want it to have a lot of body, a lot of flavor, which it should have. Um, it's got a little bit of biscuit mold in there, uh, roasted barley, a lot of crystal, just to make sure it's got some body and some sweetness to it. Um, so I want it to have a bit of a hop flavor as well. I'm just trying to make a, I had a, a red ale the other week and it was only about two and a half percent. And it tasted beautiful, I couldn't believe it. It was a dark red color and, and it just, you, you would not have guessed it, it was that low. And so I just sort of wanted to have a little play around. This isn't quite that low. <laughs> as I said, it's about 3.7, 3.8 percent will end up. But I wanted to have some flavor, body, and just be a bloody nice beer really. Um, bit of an experiment, I haven't brewed it before, we'll see how we go. There's another thing I knew I'm going to do today, which I'll show you a bit later, is a pre-chiller. It's very, very hot here today, it could get up to, it could get to 45 degrees today, which is about 110 Fahrenheit or more. Um, so I'm going to use a pre-chiller on my chiller. <laughs> so stick around at the end for that. The calm before the storm. As usual, this is the danger period where it could start boiling flat out and boil over. I've got a controller on each element and I've just got to watch it and be careful. Start turning them down before it gets on the boil. I just let this go for about five minutes or so before I start my hour clock. Just keep adjusting because it can get away from you. Jeez, it's a nice red colour. It's beautiful. Alright, here we go. 25 grams of EKGs, Kent Goldings. This is where we could get a boil over. Here we go. See how we go. Nah, perfect. Look at that, perfect. Okay, so there's my chiller. Everyone's seen before. It's getting pretty warm in here. What is it? About 30, nearly 36 degrees at the moment. Um, the groundwater will be very hot. I tried using a pond pump and the pond pump just wasn't strong enough. So I got this piece of stainless steel that I was going to use for Herms or something like that. Um, from Don Peter, thank you very much, Peter Y. And I'm just going to put ice in the bucket and some water. And as the water comes in from the tap, because it'll be pretty hot from outside, hopefully it'll cool down enough before it goes into my chiller. Now before, I've got a bag of ice to put in there, but before I do that, I'm going to put some um, bottles of frozen water I put in there first and pre-chill it. Like you, like you preheat your mash tun, but I'm going to pre-chill the uh, pre-chiller. So I've got a couple of bottles of frozen water, just to uh, get it a bit cold there before I put the ice in. Ten minutes left of the boil, so I'm just going to whack in the worth lock that I've crushed up a bit. There we go. Okay, that's the end of the boil. So as usual, I'll plug the elements. And that one. I'm going to add my flame out addition, the 20 grams of Chinook. As I said, if you want to do a, uh, a normal mild, you wouldn't add this Chinook. I just want to add it because I like doing things different. <laughs> Once that hop settled down, I'm going to give it a stir. 
just to get the whirlpool happening. steep for 10 minutes. While that's steeping I'll put the ice in the chiller. Okay, while it's steeping I'm going to pull these out. Pull these out. Once we're frozen. I'm just going to see if they, I wonder if that'll fit in there. Look at that, perfect. That'll do it. Rip the bag open. Now everyone knows the trick with salt and ice. Well, it's actually, it doesn't have to be salt. It can be anything that increases the density of the water. So I'm just going to put some soap in there. Give it a mix up. And believe it or not, watch Mythbusters. They use soap and salt and there was not much difference. Okay, there's my boil pot after sitting for uh, 10 minutes for the after whirlpooling and adding the last minute hop addition flame out hop addition my wart chiller it's a bit hard to see out there it's a bit bright because it's bloody hot um, the water's coming from the hose from the tap through that coil with ice and cold water to chill it down a bit uh, out of that around the outside of my counterflow chiller my counterflow chiller is only three meters by the way that's why i have to do these sort of things plus the groundwater at the moment is probably about 25 degrees <laughs> um there's the hot water in there the hot water goes through this middle round and round and round and the hot water comes out of there i've got to rest about to restrict it restrict it that's actually really cold that's good and i'm not going to be able to see it but uh, it's, oops, I've got to speed it up a bit, it's going a bit slow. So by that, uh, I just turn on these. These are great little taps. Um, they're detachable too. You don't have to, I can't do it now. The bottom swings out, so you don't have to cut the hose to get it off. You can put it on and take it off uh, without disconnecting the hose. Got my 24 litres. I'll show you what's left in the boil pot. And that's just to show you the effectiveness of a whirlpool. I don't use any filter on my pickup tube. Sorry it's a bit dark, but it's too hot to have the roller door open at the moment. Um, I could have squeezed another litre out of that, I reckon. But my fermenter, as you saw, is full. A bit dark, Eddie. But there's my starter. I'm going to throw in just a small starter. It's been in star scene. As I said, I've done it before. I just used a fridge magnet to hold onto the stir bar so it didn't fall in. Come check it in the morning. It's now nine o'clock the next morning, and we have action. Can't know if you can. Okay, cool. So that was another successful brew day. It was a long day, 6:30 a.m. till about 3:30 p.m. But that was with everything cleaned, mash tun, HRT boil pot everything's clean put away packed up done 
anyway I'll put the recipe down there uh, so far it's just named the red mild ale um, we sort of decided the colors of Jarrah which is an Australian redwood maybe that's what we'll call it the Jarrah as I said earlier to make it more traditional leave out the Chinook at the end I just like to try things a little bit different and mix them up but uh, I'm sure it will be fine either way. Don't forget to sign up to Cellar Dwellers and uh, pop into the Homebrew Network on Facebook. It's growing every day. I'll talk a bit more about that in the next video. Alright, cheers.